Hi, I'm Dr. Roseanne, and this is the It's Going to Be Okay podcast. And today we're talking about impulse control strategies. Because when you have a kid who doesn't put those brakes on, wow, parenting is hard, friendships are hard, managing your kid with your his or her siblings feels like a WWE smackdown. Maybe they're impulsive with the grandparents or the pets. It's hard when a kid doesn't put their brakes on. And, you know, we feel like we don't have natural options. We always feel like, well, I'm just going to give this kid this pill. And all of a sudden those behaviors are going to go away. And a lot of times, you know, those parents more than anybody know that's not the case. We have to teach behavioral regulation. I always talk about behavioral disinhibition, right? So people who have dysregulated brains, dysregulated kids, they can have understimulation and overstimulation. And in the brain of somebody with ADHD or anybody with an impulse control issue, because not everybody who has impulse control issues have ADHD. Sometimes you can see that with anxiety or OCD, certainly with mood disorders and autism, it, it can really be part of um, other clinical issues if you are more of an externalizer, right? So I talk about internalizers and externalizers. And I love to, to do that because one, not every issue is clinical, even though we have a lot of clinical issues, but dysregulated kids happen because of dysregulated brains. And when a brain is impulsive, right? What happens in impulse control in the brain is the frontal lobes, particularly this tippy, tippy, tippy front parts, FP1 and FP2, they literally are the braking system of the brain. When I do a brain map of somebody with impulse control issues, it's like on fire because they've worn out their brake pads. It's like, it's like my friend in college who had like, I don't know, she had like a 20 year old car in college. And, you know, she was always like duct tape in that thing. She was always like, I'm not going to change the brake pads. I was like, well, I'm not driving in your car. How about that? Um, but they get worn out because they're always trying to regulate and regulation just doesn't happen. And, you know, I love to talk about Homer Simpson. He's like my favorite character of an impulsive, but yet very lovable person who has ADHD. And he always was like, do it. Like he didn't want to do it. And he did it right. Because he just couldn't stop himself. And that behavioral disinhibition, right? Like not being able to put the brakes on, that's the foundation for learning. That's the foundation for executive functioning. We've talked about that in other episodes, but the frontal lobes is that braking system and we need it to work better. Now, there are other parts of the brain that we don't talk about that have a lot to do with impulse control. So our emotional centers and our limbic system, particularly our amygdala, you know, if we're overreactive, if we're feeling things at a heightened level, we can go into fight, flight, or freeze more, re more than we should, I should say. And so when that happens, you can have impulsive reactions because you're going into fight, flight, or freeze. So there can be emotional centers. Um, we can have problems with sequencing um, in our brain, which is in the parietal region, takes over some of those. Um, and when that happens, we just don't do things in the right order. We can be a little more impulsive. Those kids tend to be a little softer, even though they might be anxious. So they can fall more into an internalizer with some externalizer features. But primarily impulsive kids struggle with regulating the frontal lobes. It is just not working properly. So how does the lack of impulse control affect us in every day, right? If you're a parent, you're like, Roseanne, let me tell you, okay? Um, it's, you know, uh, keeping your hands to yourself. How many times did I see handsy? Uh, hands to myself, uh, my own kid in kindergarten. Love you, Miss Sullivan. Hope you're still around. The only, you know, public school teacher in our experience for our own limited journey in the public school that I felt like was amazing um, was an older teacher who used music and movement to really get kids who were impulsive regulated. So a lot of times, they're just not comfortable in their body. They're dysregulated. We're asking them to sit. There's unrealistic expectations. These kind of kids, I was talking to somebody who um, chose a hands-on career and he 
was a child that was in trouble all the time. And, he, you know, he was like, I just don't want that for my kids. And I try to get them moving. And I was like, that is beautiful. That is awesome. But it affects us in a variety of ways. And, and impulsive kids get in trouble more than anybody. They, they just do because there's little tolerance, especially from burnt out pandemic teachers who are not doing anything wrong. And it requires a high level of repetition for learning because behavioral disinhibition, putting that brakes on, is the foundation of learning. So if you're in constant movement, you're not transitioning, you're not going to be learning. So it, the reinforcement is very wearing on parents, on teachers, people that are loving and caring. So that doesn't mean that the child isn't special. It doesn't mean the parents aren't awesome. I'm just saying a reality that behaviorally, this can be really difficult. So you, they might not be listening. They might not be hearing their name being called. Um, you might have hyperactive behavior. You might not. The impulsive kids can even have problems um, just, just transitioning from tasks, starting a task. You're more likely to see angry responses because they overreact to things. And when anger is on the table, okay, so you're handsy and you're touching stuff, but you're fun. Okay, you can kind of get away with it. But when you're angry, oh, it freaks people out. And the older your kid is as an angry child, the harder it is. So let's talk about impulse control strategies because that is exactly what this episode is about. And there's so much power, mamas and papas and caregivers and teachers, in behavior reinforcement, okay? We got to reinforce behaviors and we have to shape them and we need constancy to do that. So how do we start with impulse control? So first of all, I'm going to tell you, you got to calm the brain. So listen to the, the, the episode that I just did on neurofeedback for ADHD. Listen to the whole series on neurofeedback. There's lots of ways we can calm the brain. Magnesium can help. You got to do things to calm the brain. These are often kids that don't sleep properly. Their diet tends to be icky. There can be sensory processing. You know, how do you calm the brain? You got to regulate the, the brain. If this is a wiring issue, if this is the brain waves are not working properly, start neurofeedback. Use our calm PEMF, right? We have one just for ADHD. Um, and it's, you know, it's a little device. You can pop it in your pocket. Do supplements. There's lots of things. So calming the brain, we got to get the nervous system regulated before we layer in learning. Otherwise, it's going uh, up a hill with a hundred pound backpack. You just don't want to do it. <laughs> Let's get it regulated. Um, we're going to, you're going to share your calm. So these kind of kids, and I'm saying this myself, I'm, I'm saying it, the truth, it's tough having an impulsive kid. Holy cow. Like you got to be an A game parent. There is no slacking, okay? And if you need a break, you got you got to like put a video on so your kids can be relaxed while, you know, otherwise a million things could happen in your house, right? Things could be taped, paint on the wall. Your kid could leave. Who knows? Lots of things. I don't mean to, you know, I, you know, I'm always joking, but we have to regulate ourselves because our kids co-regulate regulate off us. Not saying it's easy, okay? I'm saying it's going to make it easier. And you should be taking care of yourself because I just said, you got to be an A-game parent with a lot of our special needs kids or divergent brains, but especially with an impulsive kid because, you know, it just means you got to always be on and looking for things. Okay. Really important. Mindfulness-based activities. What the heck are mindfulness-based activities? Well, lots of things. So impulsive kids are not paying attention. They're just not connected. So let's get them connected. Go for nature walks, play games where they have to put the brakes on, right? Um, ha activities where they do things like I used to set up an obstacle course in my basement and they had to uh, strategize and wait and do things. This is how we teach the nervous system to regulate. This is a dysregulated brain. These are not kids that are naughty and doing things on purpose, please. They literally don't have that braking capacity in the frontal lobes, okay? Another favorite of mine, we do this all the time in the Hodge household, even into the teenage years, is preview what's expected. I find many parents are just 
pissed off at their kids because they're like, they should know better. They're 10, they're 15, they're this. Well, guess what? Some kids need things to be explicit. I don't care if their IQ is 134. Yes, I just test, I, I actually pulled out my testing equipment and tested one of my all-time favorite kids. Um, it's been a long time. Don't call me for testing, please. Um, and, you know, he, 134 IQ, super smart, but, you know, doesn't always regulate. So knowing what's expected takes away the guesswork and helps them use a, a schemata, a framework in their brain. It's super, super helpful for them and for you. And it gets them in the routine of being like, what's expected, right? It cues them. So we have to do that. Okay. Break down tasks, right? So um, when we break tasks down, it shows kids the steps. Again, making the implicit explicit. Just because a kid is smart and verbal doesn't mean that they know what to do. Really, really, really important because I think a lot of times we assume kids know the steps. That's really important. Okay. Reinforce the behaviors that you want. So when you are reinforcing the behaviors that you want, you are not pointing out the negative. You are saying, wow, I really like that you took a second before you touch the dog, right? It, instead of like, don't touch the dog. When we're constantly pointing to the negative, they have nowhere to understand the positive. So, so important. Okay, metacognitive strategies. What is that? You're gonna think out loud. I talk about this all the time. Like, oh, okay. You know, like uh, all of a sudden this week, my sixth grader had like three tests. I was like, hello, three tests. We go to a Montessori school. What's going on? You know, so they're, it's the end of the year cram. So I was like, what's your plan? What's your plan for these tests? So in the old days, I would have had to map it out for him. And he was like, okay, this is my plan. My plan is this. My plan is this. My plan is that. What do you think? And I was like, I think that's a good plan. You know, and then he's now, he now tells me his plan, like, oh, hey, listen, I got a test tomorrow. This is what I'm going to do. And I love it. He sends me emails. Hey, mom, I got a test on Thursday. I'm going to need your help. You know, he also loves my Canva skills. So I help him with the canvas. He writes the content and I'm like, oh, we're going to make a Canva. It's a winning strategy as the first person ever in my doctoral program to use a PowerPoint that all they could look at is a PowerPoint. Not that it wasn't a good dissertation, but you know, we use that, but those strategies help to get them to the higher level work and improves things. And, you know, for those of you who don't follow me, JC is a dyslexic. He doesn't have a perfect brain, right? Who the heck does? Um, okay. Behavioral dissection after an explosion. Don't try to talk to your kid when they're in the middle of something. Talk to them after, really important. You know, be be a detective like, oh, okay, well, you know, you hit your sister. Yeah, I hit my sister. And then you say, okay, well, you know, what happened? Well, she, you know, took the, the seat and this, that, and the other thing. And I was like, mm, okay, well, you know, have any ideas what other things you could have did? Yeah, well, I guess I could have did this. Oh, okay. Sounds like a good idea. What's your plan for the next time, right? And in, rolled into that is never shame or blame because when in that situation, right, of course, safety is important. If your child is like beating the bejesus out of somebody, you know, including the neighbors, you, you have to intervene. But sibling WDWE smackdowns are normal. And so we have to look at what it is. We have to get them to problem solve. They need those metacognitive strategies. We have to give them to them. We have to walk them through it and we have to share ours. Really, really important. And our kids that are impulsive really feel terrible about themselves. And there's a point where Many impulsive kids, particularly impulsive ADD kids, flip to depression because they're constantly being told what's wrong about them. They're never told what's right. And it's often a reason why many parents turn to medication because they feel like they have no choice. These are strategies you can do. You got to be consistent. I'm not saying it's easy, but we sign up for kids. And we get, we do what we, we, we have to deal with what we got. You don't get to turn back in. I know that everybody has a moment when they want to, you can do this. These are the tools that give you that. So if you need help, 
Because some of you really need help and you may be very inspired and you may say, hey, Roseanne, I, I recognize my kid really has a problem and guess what? I don't want to put him on meds or I want to take him off meds or I don't want my kid to be depressed. Well, then you need to take our solution matcher and you can go to www.drroseanne.com forward slash help and you can take that and that is a, a place where you also can discover if you're ready to work one-on-one -on -one with us. So this is not easy stuff. I'm super proud that you're here. You're going to take an action. I'm all about natural solutions for kids' brains and behavior. And we discussed many awesome ones. And every parent is capable of starting. You just got to do it. Thank you.